if you're a loan officer who's tired of chasing real estate agents and whose sole existence built around agents and refinances and you're looking for a change in diversification, I'm about to show you the secret that my clients, who some of, some of them earn six figures monthly, not close six figures, but earn in income six figures monthly using these loan officer sources that I'm about to share with you right now. Five out of the box loan officer referral sources. The first one is a divorce attorney, right? This is a man, woman, split up. There's a line drawn between them. It's donezo for them. Notice the, uh, the frown on his face and the, the smile on her. Guys, we all know what happens when, when she leaves you. She leaves with a ring to pawn and a, a car and half your fortune and and uh, man, I mean, she seems a lot more happy. Anyway, so <clears throat> maybe I've been there. <laughs> so anyway, back to my story. Divorce attorney's awesome because this is the thing. If they own a house together, then the chances are you're gonna have to refinance one of them off the title uh, if one of them wants to stay there. It might be a lead for a real estate agent that you've been wanting to work with if the two of them need to sell the home that they live in. And it might also be two separate loans if they go out and they buy separate homes after they split up. So you could get anywhere between one and three transactions per lead that you get from a divorce attorney. It's mind boggling how many people are out there in the loan officer profession that aren't chasing uh, lawyers. Lawyers do more transactions than real estate agents do. You think the average real estate agent does three transactions a year. Think of how many divorces the average uh, divorce attorney, the average family law attorney goes through. I'm, I don't know, 10, 15 a month? Google it. It's, look up. It's a staggering amount. It's a lot. It's a lot more than real estate agents. And you think if they sell, if they sell, if they do 10 settlements each month where people are going through divorces, they take on 10 divorce cases a month and each one is up to three leads. That means those 10 leads could be 30 transactions for you with one referral source. Now think about how much 30 transactions would matter to you in a month, in 12 months, let alone a month. The next thing is life insurance policy agents. This is a life insurance. That's a little gold certification star, but I don't have a gold marker. So I just made it red because I'm just too lazy to un. Cap, yeah, we don't have a green marker at all. That's been a frustration source today too. But life policies, because here's the thing, when you sell a home or when you close a home, right, close a mortgage for somebody, the first thing that starts showing up in their mail are all these offers for mortgage protection insurance. And in case you didn't know this, if you've never gone through as a loan officer, you should, but in case you didn't know this, mortgage protection insurance is nothing more than a marketing word, a marketing code for, for life insurance policy. But here's the thing, these life insurance agents, they have a database of people that they've had policies with since day one when they bought the home and they call them up. They know who needs to refinance, they know who's about to buy another home and switch the policies over, so they can be the ultimate resource for you. The average life policy salesman will go on 25 appointments every single month. If they were spreading the word about you for whatever motivation you could give them, how powerful would that be for your business if you just got 10%? of the 25 that they're doing every month. If you just got 10% of that, how much more money would that mean in your pocket? Why are you not chasing this source? And this is virtually untapped. Loan officers have heard about divorce attorneys and family lawyers, but they're a little intimidated, which is complete bull. But nobody's chasing the mortgage protection insurance guys, and they're a gold mine, I promise you. The next thing is real estate investors, right? People that buy fixer uppers and flips, and you might say, well, we can't insure it if it's got, or we can't close on it if it's got foundation problems, and you can't get insurance on it if it's got roofing problems. Well, I'm talking about the people that buy the distressed home with cash, and then they turn around and list with the real estate agent and sell the home after it's been rehabbed. That's what I do. I own a company called Wolfman Assets, and we flip homes. We buy raggedy homes. You wouldn't believe the one that I got my hands on right now. This thing is a mess. I've had to drop about $85,000 into it. But after I'm done, the home's going to be brand new in tip-top shape, and I'm going to need a mortgage person to be able to do the loan for the home after I'm done because I'm going to list it for sale by owner. I'm going to market it with my own skills, list it for sale by owner. I could partner up with a mortgage person because that's who I need. Now, now listen, most investors do for sale by owner because they don't want to have to pay the fees because it cuts into their margins. So most of them need somebody they can rely on to do prequals and to get their people pre-approved. And guess what? If they don't buy in the investor's house, they're eventually going to buy some house, especially if you're the person that supplies them with money. The next thing is garage sale groups on Facebook. Now there's this thing in the marketing world called the tripwire. And it's like if you're rolling through the jungle and you make that tripwire, it sends a signal. When, when the bomb goes off, it sends a signal to the enemy that somebody's out there in that portion of the forest, right? It's a tripwire. Well, the garage sale is a tripwire. It sends a signal to you, the loan officer, that there's a good chance that somebody's about to move because nobody just wakes up on a Saturday and they're like, 
Let's just uh, invite the neighbors over to give us their loose change for some things that we don't want, right? No, what happens is people say, wow, man, we've got too much stuff here. We've got to have a garage sale. But what oftentimes happens is somebody says, hey, we're about to move. Let's have a garage sale to get rid of our stuff so we don't have to move at all. And if somebody's moving, that means they're probably going to buy another house, which means that they're probably a good lead for you. So if you go in one of these citywide Facebook garage sale groups, which exist everywhere that I've seen, if it doesn't exist in your area, start one. People can go in here and they post about having a garage sale. You could reach out to those people and say, hey, why are you having a garage sale? And they could be like, oh, we're thinking about buying another house. And bam, there's a hot lead for you. All right. Now, fifth, but not last, but not least, there is the builders, right? This is the model home community with the flag and shit. God bless America, right? And so the thing is with builders, they have multiple transactions. And I know a lot of you say, well, they got MSAs or they have preferred lender that pay the title. But if you can supply them with leads, it's a whole different story. Same goes for all these, actually. If you can supply them with leads, it's a whole different story. But when you go out there and you prospect builders and you teach them how to get people to check in using Facebook, you teach them how to, their builder reps, how to make videos of the homes from the time that the foundations poured to the sticks and send those videos out on a regular basis. You teach them how to run an ad on Facebook. I have a developer down in Austin, Texas that I ran advertisements for last year. Their minimum home price was a million dollars. And we sold, I think, $19 million just through Facebook ads. And we probably, probably spent about $12,000 to do that. So you think about that, you could do that for a builder if I was a loan officer that builder would have given me all that like the, they've more than paid me a generous amount of money to help them move that inventory but at the same time if that if I was a loan officer they would have given me all their business and this was a huge developer not just in this neighborhood that's the power that you hold now that you understand these five ways divorce attorneys life insurance agents real estate investors garage sale groups and builders those are the five alternative sources that you can use to not only replace agents but because you have this network agents start coming to you and going dude how do I get in on this hustle with the attorneys how do I get in on this hustle with the uh, builders how do I get in with the life insurance guys that know when people need to sell and you control the network as the loan officer because I believe that the loan officer is the person that should be in power the whole time because you're the person that has the money you have to do the most paperwork you have to have the most precision you have to reach the guidelines you're the one that has to continually call them and go give me the blank page at the back of the bank statement Stan right we have to do that stuff as loan officers I want to help you create this network. I want to help you put systems in place that deliver the leads to the places that you want and the way to automatically manage it with the automation follow-up and bots that we have. You can get all of that by simply checking out BreakFreeAcademy.com forward slash entourage and signing up over there. Go to BreakFreeAcademy.com forward slash entourage. Go over there, check out the sales page, sign up, join our mastermind, and I'll personally help you put all these things in place in your mortgage business. Thanks for watching. Make sure you share it with another LO that you'd like to help their business.